Sure, tell me about the mugs. The mugs, okay, so in 2008, uh, Moss, who owns Frank, uh, Frankie's uh, Tiki Room, or it's called, Frankie's Tiki Room. Uh, so he asked me to design a mug. This is called the Bearded Clam, and that was his idea. He's a pervert, love the guy. Um, so the, the initial sketch, because he didn't tell me it was for, let me see if I can find this really quick. Okay, so this one, this was what I did for him. So this is the the um, sketch or drawing, whatever it is. Can you see that? Does that make sense? A little bit. Okay, so that became this. Now, I didn't know this was for a tiki mug, so I didn't have much else to do with it. And then uh, it, this, these were hand-carved back then. You know, and so th this was hand carved in two thousand eight. Who hand carves it? I I don't know. It probably, it, Tiki Farm is the producer of these, the largest tiki manufacturer in the world. Um, so he probably had someone on staff. I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure who it was. Um, but yeah, so then it becomes you know the, then whoever okay's it, uh, it, it becomes um, in ceramic, and then they put a glaze on it, and they put it in the kiln, and send it to America. They, they're mostly made in China. China or Mexico, actually. So that was, you know, from there to there is, uh, it's, it, they did a pretty good job. You know, I uh, wish it was a little prettier, but it is what it is. And then in 2017, um, Most asked me to do something called Swanky Frankie, which was, ended up being this guy. So the initial sketch of him, and this is pretty fascinating, so that became... This was the first sketch that I did for him, you know, and he goes, I, you know, I want him to be very regal. I want him to have a monocle. That's pretty much the only thing he said to me. I want him to have a monocle, like a shrunken head with a monocle. And, you know, so I'm designing it thinking, you know, forgetting that that, you know, because shrunken heads, they have them by the head, you know, and, and that traditional uh, shrunken head that you see, like from the 60s, hanging from, uh, you know, the, the, the visor or whatever on a car. Um, so... He the the only notes were it can't have that it needs to so I threw him into a hat and then this was the uh, the first painting uh, based on that sketch and so threw him in a hat Moss didn't like the hat he thought it made him look it, it just it took the idea of the shrunken head down you know it became like he looked more like Frankenstein he said so then the sketching that I did so then I needed four sides so once. I figured out how to take it down to like a top knot, and so then a straw goes in there. No one ever puts a straw in there, the straw goes in here. But that was the idea, that the straw could sit on, on the knot there. And so it, this is not that far removed from the initial sketch. I mean, they really did a good job. So then I, I had to draw four sides. So each side, and they make, they make a few changes based on, on, on that. So, uh, you know, on, on it being a mug versus a drawing. So then from there, it goes to um, a 3D mold. And so this became the mold. And you can see that is identical. You know, so based on, on my initial sketching and all that stuff. So then uh, that goes uh, to uh, China, and they figure out the glaze. So this one's pretty neat because this, this has very much gloss. But they, they did a mat on the, on the skull there. And then they put some, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that's a sticker of some kind on the monocle. And then uh, the chain and stuff. So it, there's a, a lot of care taken to it. But, I mean, it is, from my initial drawing to this, it does, it's, this is very much my, my vision, my design. Um, now, I, I don't carve. I, I'm sure I could if I wanted to. But um, I'm not 100% sure whether this was hand carved. My guess it was, is this is computer is uh, the, the more I look at digital sculpture. How about I read the fucking thing, right? Digital sculpture. So uh, computers are doing it now. But to be honest, there's not, you know, from hand carved to computer, it looks pretty much the same. Um, you know, so we, I'm using a computer right now. There ain't nothing wrong with computer. So uh, right now I'm designing, uh, this is the bearded clam. I'm designing the revenge of the bearded clam. So this will be coming out hopefully by the end of this year. So that's, going to be facing her. So this is her with a makeover. I cleaned up the hair. Very much uh, Don DiCarlo inspired. I, you know, I, if you're going to steal from anyone, may as well be someone who knows how to draw women. And he does. He did the Archie comics and all that kind of stuff. So very Don DiCarlo. Yeah, once I'm done, this is the initial sketch. 
once I'm done, I'll make it more mine. But that was very much, I wanted it kind of that Archie, Betty Veronica style. And so she has four arms like this one does. I don't know why she has four arms. That was my artistic choice. Uh, but I, I had her going from the knees up so that I could get more detail. So this, this mug will sit uh, probably about that high. I want it at least another inch off of this mug just to make it a little bit bigger so I can get more detail. And then, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean this drawing up, do a shade study, and, the, and then I'm actually going to paint it uh, like, uh, like I did that, uh, that other one, the, where is that? like I did this one. Um, even though this is, you know, much different from this, you know, I like to give uh, the artists who are going to sculpt it and, and, and cast it um, as, as much information as they can from, from my vision. So that's uh, it's pretty neat. So that I'm on that. And then, so that's Revenge of the Bearded Clam uh, coming, hopefully, by the end of the year, if not, if not sooner. We'll see. So these are made specifically for certain bars, right? Yeah, most, mostly. So this entire collection, the majority of these... Uh, are from different bars across the country, and and they're uh, and and then some of them are just collectors' items, you know. Like this, this is technically not a tiki mug, this devil, but it is in the in the tiki mug style. Uh, the majority of these other ones were, were made for bars. Um, some of these, you know, are like these are from like the nineteen sixties and seventies. These here, where this is modern, the, this entire shelf is modern. Uh, but some of these other ones scattered. I, I love the ones from the 60s and 70s. They're just incredible. When uh, when Tiki's, you know, they really, Tiki uh, bars and all that stuff just started coming into their own in the 1950s. I think it was after, you know, my guess, I, I could probably do the research uh, at some point. <laughs> um, you know, after World War II, there was a big interest in, you know, everything Polynesian, with especially with, you know, Pearl Harbor and and the, the interest in Hawaii and all that stuff. I think that that's, I, I'm guessing, you know, again, uh, Google it, but uh, it's, it's, that's when the tiki bars really started coming into their own and they scattered across uh, the world. Well, now there's another big resurgence. Um, you know, we, we have two major tiki bars out here in Vegas, but pretty much in any major city, you're going to find tiki bars and they're going to need mugs designed. So they reach out to someone like me to design a mug. Uh, but I am coming up with my own signature mugs, uh, hopefully again by this uh, end of this year. They, they take a long time, so. How did they find you? Like, how did these, these two places get in touch with you? Well, uh, me and Moss uh, have known each other for, he's the, the owner of Frankie's Tiki Room, the Double Down. Um, we've known each other so long, and, I, and I've been into Tiki's for so long. And so, I don't know, you know, I'm not going to be so, you know, brash to say that I inspired Frankie's, but I think I did on some level. And my tiki collection was here um, in, in, in my shop, you know, 25 years ago. You know, and I, I brought my tiki collection from home here. And then, so I've been collecting tiki since I was a kid. But certainly, um, you know, 20, 25 years ago, I had a massive collection. Then I downsized it. Then I got it back. <laughs> you know? So I'm slightly obsessive on everything. But now that I'm designing uh, more tiki's, and I've got you know four coming out this year, um, I'm really moving away from tattooing into design and music because I've been tattooing almost thirty years, and I'm fucking bored with it to be honest. So it's 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 uh, it's it, being a creative person, you know, because I'm, I'm working on a book, I'm working on tiki's, I've got my paintings, I've got my music. There's so much uh, places to put my creative energy that. Uh, Unless I focus on one at a time, then it get, kind of gets diluted on everything, you know. So then, you know, you got the music versus the drawing versus the tattooing, and it's all it, it begins to be too much. But unfortunately, uh, with my ADHD, which is just manic right now, um, I, I have to do something creative or my head explodes. I'm, but the, the problem with that is it's very short lived. Like I'm writing an album right now, and I, I'm, I'm trying to write it in one week just because that's the punk rock way. Um, and I'll do it. I'm eight, eight songs in. I'll write another uh, handful by, if I could do math, I uh, want 13 songs. I'll write another handful this weekend and then get ready to start recording an album next month. So, very excited. But in the meantime, I got some tiki's to design. You know. How did you get into tiki's in the first place? What was it about that? Oh. <laughs> your attention? You know, I, I don't know initially. I, I think when I was a kid, I remember that there was this Brady Bunch episode where... Uh, 
he, I think it was Bobby or whoever, one of, one of those guys, uh, found a tiki on the beach, and then he wanted to take it home, but they said if you leave the island with it, um, and that was very much like a Coco, Go Coco Joe's tiki. They're, 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 I think they're made from lava or something like that, but they're black. And, and I remember seeing them when I went to Hawaii when I was a kid, uh, just being obsessed with it. I, I got as many tikis as my meager allowance could afford and brought them home, hoping that the curse wasn't there. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think that, that that was the initial start. And then when I got older, I just kept running in because I, I, I would always go to antique stores and stuff to kind of decorate my shop. And I'd find things, you know, besides, you know, you can see there's, a, there's so much artwork on my walls. A lot of this comes from just going antiquing and finding things. And I just kept finding these tiki mugs and I was just drawn to them. And at that time, especially, you know, 25 years ago, give or take, um, you could find tiki's in every, and, and tiki's cost five bucks. You know, that is like a thrift store. Yeah, you, you, and, and you still sort of can. And, and some of these uh, tiki's, let me see if I can find one that would be okay. So, like these, you've got this, is, this is vintage. So, this is called the Fu Manchu. And I would say, okay, Japan, uh, 1982. This is or Orchids of Hawaii. And they, and these, these are great. They're incl incredibly racist. I know it's the, it's the time, but they're also, they make you smile. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Again, with speak with the more of the racist tiki's, and these aren't really tiki's. These are mugs, you know. These aren't these aren't Polynesian. So this this is from the financial district in Chinatown, San Francisco, and I would say this is probably from like maybe seventy six, somewhere around that area. And you know, so you have these are really fun. Now you get into modern ones. This is from Cheeseburger. It's uh, Mai Tais and Rock and Roll and Waikiki. Tiki Farm, once again, the greatest uh, tiki farm for your tikis. Um, and he's holding the cheeseburger, and it makes you smile. And that's that's the thing. I love when the tikis are doing something. Like, this guy is holding a tiki, and that's funny to me, you know. This one has a shrunken head, and she's spilling drinks. You can really, there's a lot of humor in, in these things uh, that uh, it, I think was, was there from the beginning. Because tikis make you smile. There's something about them. That when when you when they're around me especially like I come into this room and there's over a hundred tiki's in this room I mean there's they're everywhere um, or tiki mugs if you know if you want to say it, but that's what it is um, the tiki mugs they just they make me smile they make me they make me comfortable and I love them around me I love them watching me and and I feel that you know, on some level I don't want to you know get into this too philosophical, but they protect me, they're here, they're positive. They're very much a positive influence in here. Uh, unless there's an earthquake, then I'm fucked. But <laughs> then now it's a pile of fucking ceramic trash. But uh, thank God there's no earthquakes in Vegas. But uh, but yeah, so it just, they, they, they make me happy. I still don't know what the initial attraction is. I'm an obsessive person and I need to collect something. And so whether it's CDs or Tiki's or back in the day with records and, and all that stuff, I need to have the things that I collect. Um, it, it, it helps me with, uh, with my uh, OCD and ADHD. It helps me to, um, my therapist said, <laughs> you know, what is it, 53? This is when, when I was 53. And I, I had this mass uh, collection of uh, CDs. And she goes, does a 53-year-old man need a CD collection? I go, he absolutely doesn't. But do I need anything? You know, I don't need this, but I don't need this, and I don't need this. I, it, it, it's what makes us happy and what makes us, uh, I think everyone has something to collect. And I, and so my, mine is uh, CDs and, and tiki mugs. And uh, man, do I, ha I think I have them all. <laughs> Maybe not them all. But it's, it's very easy, especially now with eBay and stuff, to uh, get online and start searching. You know, because I, I, I I, I've gone to every single antique store in a 500 mile radius over the past you know few decades and uh i've gotten all the tiki's i can i have all the tiki's i need uh so i give away tiki mugs to friends you know if i if i get two i'm like oh well that one's better than mine well here you can have this shit one i don't want anymore it's got a crack on it or whatever but uh it, it's very much something to, to that i can obsess over and, and but it's enjoyable so thank you Derek. sure